We're looking quickly at the basics of solar panels, the common styles that you get. You get the polycrystal panels, the monocrystals, and then also the thin film. Most effective are the monocrystalline solar modules, the way they are made, but the polycrystalline, if you have space, they're a bit bigger, they're just as close, uh, much cheaper. So nothing wrong with any of the technology. You have to choose what you want. Okay, the advancements in the solar panel technology, you can have a look through it. Those that we see quite a lot now is the bifacial panels and also the split cells, uh, the half cut cells. And yeah, so just take note regardless of the specific type of technology incorporated, all panels operate on the same principle, converting light into direct current, DC current. Most of the people say we must stop using solar panels and must, we must start using solar modules because it's more of a module. So understanding the solar cells and the panels. Solar cells, as a solar consists of numerous small units known as solar cells. The solar cells generate power through photofolic, where photons uh, particles of light knocks electrons free from the atoms creating a flow of direct current electricity the wiring configuration they all differ but they more or less the same solar cells are connected in series within a solar panel just as the picture is illustrating there this series connection enables the cumulative generation of electricity across the cells and a solar panel or a solar module is the assembly of the interconnected solar module, the primary unit for harvesting solar energy. So here's an example how it basically looks. And that's why if you have, if you have shading, you've got problems. Because if one cell goes off, you lose the efficiency of the whole, of the whole panel. Because they're all connected in series. So the assembly of the interconnected solar cells become a module which serves as a primary unit for harvesting solar energy. And traditionally we have 60 cells and 72 cell panels and also 120 cells. And these days we get the 144 cells, half cut cells that are quite popular. This is how they look. These are the advantages. It's ideal for residential or commercial applications seeking enhanced efficiency and reliability. There's basically two ways that you can connect panels. It's series and parallel and uh, or a combination of them both. So we're going to have a look at that. The more panels you connect, the greater the overall power output. So we know the watts equals the volts times amps. Let's quickly have a look at the residential solar PV systems can have up to 600 volt DC panels connected into series to increase the kilowatt the output the strings can be connected in parallel adding the amps and keeping the volts the same in commercial industry it may go up to 1500 volts of the panels connected in series and all the multiple string can be connected into parallel to meet the desired power requirement as engineered by the engineers. So we're quickly going to have a look at a normal series connection, four panels into one string. There's the, we use that panel just to keep it as close and simple as possible, just for illustration. So there's lots of technicalities in this. But this is just more or less to give you an idea how it works. It's 50 volts DC and 10 amps. So you will have your 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 rails, your track, your whatever, you, how you're going to connect them. So you're going to connect them on that. There's end lamps and mid lamps. But we're not going to go through that. So there you will have on this one side, you'll have the MC4. And then if you interconnect them, you will see you will have a voltage so the first one will be 50 volts 10 amps if you keep on connecting them remember mc4 connectors you will clip them in we will speak to later on that as well so as soon as you connect the next one it will become 100 volt but it will stay 10 amp 
so you will go on put the next panel on so then it will become 150 volt DC and 10 amp you keep on connecting to the end of the string and then you will get to 200 volt DC 10 amp that's in the ideal conditions but that's more or less this what you will get so if you want to do parallel so we're going to put two string of these same panels so here you're going to put the first string and then you're going to put the second string on and your first string that will give you will give you 200 volt dc 10 amps and your second string will also give you the 200 volts 10 amps and if you parallel them so you put the positive on the positive and the negative on the negative so if you parallel them and you have to measure them they will give you now 200 volts so the volts will still the say stay the same and your amps will add up so that will give you 200 volt 20 amps and thereby you increase your power so 200 volts times 20 amps so that will give you an output of 4 kilowatt so it all depends on what inverter small big the principle stays the same we're going to quickly have a look at the combiner box so what we're going to want to get to is where to switch it off and your panels will always stay energized so here's a pv combiner box it's a two in one out just an example there's your pv string that we measured so if you connect them so that your positives will go to the one side your negatives will come in you will connect the mc4s we will speak about the mc4 connections which is very important especially on the those ends that we speak about here you will cut those off you will cut that one off you will cut that one off you will cut that one off and put the same mc4s that you have in stock from your supplier so that makes a good connection and then you will also do the same that side i always have a problem here as well um, i like to rather take it directly into the pv combiner box and not with the mc4s but those you won't take in and out so that's fine and then again we have the stickers on and the stickers is very important because this is what i want to show you is these wires will always stay energized so all the way from your roof to your pv combiner box you cannot switch your panels off they will stay energized so that's why we will put stickers on everywhere live dc wires running here so there's quite a lot of risks involved and we've got solutions for that but this is just for an illustration so here you will see it your 200 volts 20 amp system that will be there and your PV combiner box outside will go to your charge controller. So this is very important, your DC zone warning, the solar panels and the DC cables above this connection point will be live and dangerous when exposed to light or during daytime. So even just with floodlights, it will still produce. So by disconnecting your, your PV combiner box, there's quite a lot of wires that's still live and you need to take note of that.